welcome to this video. Thank you so much for clicking on it, especially because in the past years of not having a channel, not posting videos, I have seen this question come up a lot. There are many, many different opinions. I would like to throw my opinion in the mix as well, because Andrea Alum asked me, is it okay to repot this orchid in full bloom? I am paraphrasing, but the comment is up. This question comes up a lot, and it often comes up when dealing with Phalaenopsis orchids. My examples here are my Phalaenopsis mini mark. Thank you so much to Anonymous for gifting me this cutie. And of course, my Phalaenopsis complex hybrid, Lemon Sherbert, which was a candidate for staking XXL orchids in that video where Andrea Alum had her question. So that's why she is in there. Besides, it also gives an update that so far no blooms have dropped. What I want to do with this question is expand on that question itself and add a few more points where this question is always directed. So if I take that question and add on to it a little bit, I am going to conclude that will the blooms drop because of interfering and repotting the orchid? And here is my take on the whole situation, not only about blooms, but about bud blast. I will be asking a few questions in order then to present the answer in my reasoning. So when repotting an orchid, any orchid, here we have Phalaenopsis orchids, when they are in full bloom, we anticipate the blooms to drop prematurely. However, think about it. If you have to repot, if you have to intervene, if something's going on, that is priority. Blooms are secondary. You would also have to know how old the blooms are on the orchid. Because if you were to observe blooms fading quickly or dropping, you might conclude that to be because of the disturbance and the repotting. But what if your blooms have already bloomed a long time, as is the case with my lemon sherbet, it's been at least two months in bloom when I then did the staking. If I hadn't interfered with it, the blooms would be aging anyway because they've been in bloom for so long. Same thing when you get your orchid from a nursery brand new or a garden center or anywhere. Do you know how long the blooms have been open? And is it because of your repot that the blooms dropped? And it's easier to determine a little bit about the age of blooms if we still have some buds on our flower spike that is why my mini mark is here. Her blooms are open, she needs a repot, and she has buds. But you can see that because she's got buds, those blooms are fresher. Will they drop when I repot the orchid? That remains to be seen. It may also be a change of environment that causes a bloom to fade quicker than it normally would, meaning you brought the orchid home and now it is in a different location. It has nothing to do with a repot. Same with bud blast. So you see the answer is, a repot doesn't necessarily trigger bloom drop per se. There are so many other factors all around the possibility of blooms dropping, age being a big one of them. There's going to be also a common denominator throughout everything I am talking about when it comes to answering what would appear to be a very simple question, and that is stress. Any form of stress we put our orchid under can result in rapid bloom fading off a spike that otherwise would appear to be quite healthy. I have my orchids now moved from their location where they normally live, and especially the mini mark being in bud, hmm, different location in a draft, little bit warmer, I am risking bud blast simply because I moved the orchid. It's a form of stress. And my lemon sherbet, she may now also drop some of her blooms because I moved her into an environment that is not as cool and inviting as where she is living and it also has some warm wind. The simplest answer when it comes to can I repot this phalaenopsis while in full bloom is yes. The consequences afterwards are what I'm trying to analyze here. That the repot itself is not always the reason why a bud would blast or a bloom would drop. Any form of stress, and a repot is a form of stress to the orchid, any form of stress can cause an orchid that is otherwise in full bloom suddenly to drop the blooms and the buds. We have to also prioritize what we want to achieve with our orchids long term. So as unfortunate as it is that we like to enjoy our Phalaenopsis blooms once we have them, there's also a time of year that we have to intervene and work on the orchid because that is the best timing for the orchid less stressful because it doesn't have to worry about odd temperature fluctuations and not enough light levels for it to continue to grow and become healthy and strong during the growing season. So with these orchids that bloom for a very, very long time, 
Are we just going to wait because we want to enjoy the blooms or are we going to risk some blooms dropping because we're going to put her under some form of stress in order to secure the long-term health, progress and development of our Phalaenopsis? In all my years trying to grow these gorgeous orchids, I have always tried to respect what I need to do based on the time of year so that the fowl can stay strong and then next year I will reap the rewards. The stress is much, much more reduced when it comes to doing what we have to do during a time of year where all the conditions match and are according to the orchid's preferred requirements active growth temperature day length and yes it may sound as though i am specifically targeting growers that are able to grow their orchids outdoors at some point in time during the year and are not in a controlled environment as in a grow space or a greenhouse but these orchids have a natural rhythm a natural bio clock in themselves as well if there is an emergency it is very very advantageous to have a controlled environment because the risk of doing damage or the orchid not handling the stress of a repot or intervention very very well well, is so much more diminished because we can control day length by means of artificial light and high temperatures by means of heaters or heat mats. However, there is never a guarantee that these controlled environments will not cause an adverse effect and it doesn't work out. So the time of year is what we need to respect, not if the orchid is in full bloom or not. We have to always consider what we are trying to achieve long term with our Phalaenopsis orchid or any orchid for that matter and not be so focused on the fact that the orchid is in bloom. This is such an oxymoron for an orchid grower because why we grow our orchids, why we buy the orchids in the first place is because we love the blooms and here we are possibly having to interfere while the orchid is in bloom just to maintain the long-term health of the orchid. It's a difficult situation and a difficult choice to make if your orchid hasn't been in bloom for quite some time and you are ready and eager to see the blooms again and yet here we are, we are faced with a situation of disturbing the orchid yet she is in bloom. I can assure you that I always struggle to do that with my orchids whether they're in spike, in bloom or in bud. However, my main focus is long term and I keep telling myself if I want to see the blooms again, I will do what I have to do given the right time of year, given the right temperature and day length so that all the stress I'm putting on the orchid when it comes to a repot will be greatly, greatly reduced. And then I have plenty of time to watch the orchid do what it has to do in order to do what I want it to do as in new roots, new leaves and hopefully welcome a new flower display the following year and you can see that after 10 days almost two weeks of me staking this orchid and having had her out of the pot cutting some roots away her blooms have not faded yet and i am watching them closely because if the blooms start to fade then I will be nipping them off to help her along in the process. She is not showing me any signs of stress. Her leaves are not in any way looking shriveled. They are not flopping. Everything is going well in the pot and that is why I'm leaving the blooms on. The option being to cut the entire spike. But if there is no need to do that because all the signals are there that the orchid has handled the interference very, very well, I leave the spike on and if she wants to then absorb the spike, be my guest. Now you see that one of my orchids is in Lekka and self-watering and the Phalaenopsis mini mark is still in its nursery container. So I am going to add on the repot but including that the transition stress of media and now is the time to go in because of root growth because again I want to take advantage of the time of year. I have seen the blooms, they have been documented, but it is go time for me to transition this orchid. That is much more stressful than an intervention of staking a Phalaenopsis, taking her out of the pot and refilling with exactly the same media in the same setup. The Phalaenopsis Mini Mark is not going to have it that easy and that cozy. That bark has to come off. It needs a complete rehaul. There's going to be much more fiddle around the root system. And on top of that, the roots are going to get a media that they have never ever touched in their life. And on top of that, she's blooming and has more buds coming. That is not going to deter me from doing what I have to do for my Phalaenopsis Mini Mark this time of year. And if she chooses to blast her buds, 
Okay, that is understandable as long as she continues with root growth. So I know that this was rather a long-winded answer with a lot of little variables and tangents, but it is important to understand the age of your blooms, whether it's the right time of year, whether the conditions are favorable for the orchid to be able to handle the stress of an intervention, of a repot, of sorts. And if she then decides to dump the blooms, you have your answer. But know that just because she's dumping her blooms, should that happen, it doesn't mean there is a problem in the pot. You can bring a brand new Phalaenopsis into your home, having just purchased it, you have not done a repot, it is still in its original container, in the old media it came with, and 24 hours later you go and admire the beautiful new blooms that you've just brought home, and they will be collapsing or buds are blasting left, right and center. A repot is not the reason why blooms would fail. It is one of the reasons, but not the reason. And an orchid in bloom should never ever deter you from repotting when the time is right to do so. Always remember, less stress for the orchid is when the conditions are perfect in order to do what we have to do so that our orchid grows well, stays healthy, and our orchid can then bloom for us again and again and again, that is the long-term planning of repotting your orchid, whether in spike or in bloom. If your blooms drop or your buds blast because of what you had to do, know that what you did was the right thing and blooms dropping or buds blasting is not because you've made a mistake or you haven't fertilized the orchid enough. And know that the age of the blooms is a massive, massive factor as to why they would drop, even if you were not to intervene and repot. Andrea Alam, I appreciate that you brought this subject to my attention, that you had the question. I know we discussed it in the comments, but still, I thought it was very interesting. I have seen this question being addressed for many years. I hope that my two cents worth was helpful and that you found another little nugget of intel there that'll help you make your decision for future eventualities. If you have a specific case, let's just say very specific, please let me know in the comments. We can talk about specifics and get into more detail there as well. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I appreciate your time very much. I wish you a beautiful day. One condition though, please, you stay safe. Take care. Bye.